You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. My name is Kenny and it's my privilege to be sharing the word to you this afternoon in behalf of our pastor. So, we are in this study on the book of Philippians. Last week, kung nandito kayo, Pastor Ben talked about a life radically transformed dun sa Philippians chapter 3. Kung paano nagbago si Paul from relying in himself, from relying in his strength, in his accomplishments, na yung sa lahat ng galing niya, yung lahat na amazing na paas niya, and na turn sa pag-completely rely on the Lord. So, how did that happen? He encountered the Lord powerfully and his, his mind was renewed by the Word. And also, he experienced many things, including tons and tons and tons of difficulties and hardships. Paul even enumerated in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, yung book na to written way before Philippians, sabi niya, na ilang beses daw siya na put into prison, ilang beses siya na latigo, ilang beses na nganib ang buhay, ilang beses ginulpe, binato, na shipwreck, yung hard labor na na-experience niya, yung mga sleepless nights, how many days he would go about in hunger, in thirst, wala siyang makae, nilamig, and sa mga burdens pa niya, sa mga churches. So grabe no, that, he, that time na enumerate niya lahat ng hardships niya, we could truly say na ang hirap ng buhay ni Paul. But as we know, dito sa Book of Philippians, yung paulit-ulit na emphasize ay ang joy. Sabi nyo nga, joy. So today, I want to propose, sa example nga ni Paul, diba? I want to propose na it is possible to have joy even in hardship. Kasi the person na ang daming-daming pinagdaanan na mahihirap, he was able to encourage people to be joyful kasi siya mismo ay nag e ng joy. Ang mga normal na tao, kapag nagkaka-experience ng hardship, they would break. They would become de depressed. They would be embittered. They would be angry. They would grow weak. And they would even withdraw. But how come this Paul, he remained joyful, he exuded with joy, and continued to encourage others to be joyful despite the hardships he experienced? Take note, nung sinusulat niya yung book of Philippians, ongoing pa ang struggle niya, ang hardship niya, because he was still in prison. So today, yun yung pag-uusapan natin. We are going to talk about yung six na peace that helped Paul have joy even in hardships. So babasahin natin Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 to 13 and then magpray tayo. Kung may mga Bible kayo, I would encourage you to be reading with me. So Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 to 13. Let's read. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Now I appeal to you, Euidia and Sintike, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice 
all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful time that you have given us. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to praise you. Even for this opportunity, oh Lord, to listen to your word. I pray, oh God, that you would be the one who would speak sa bawat taong nakikinig ngayon. Let your word bring life. Let your word bring clarity. And let your word, oh God, bring relief from every pain and suffering that we are experiencing, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that the spirit of joy would just really be manifested. It would really be viral, oh God. And we would be people, oh God, na pagkatapos nito, Lord, ia apply namin ang word mo, we would exude with joy sa lahat ng aspeto ng buhay namin. O Lord, wala kami ibang pangalan na pinapangalandakan kundi ikaw lamang. Accomplish what you want to accomplish. We surrender everything to you. You are Lord, you are God, and you are sovereign. We love you and we honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, mula sa binasa natin kanina, doon natin kukunin yung anim na letter P na nakatulong kay Paul paano siya nag-remain na joyful despite the hardship he experienced. So, unahin na natin. First, na P ay people. Sabi sa verse 1, My dear and precious friends, whom I deeply love and have truly become my glorious joy and crown of reward now arise in the fullness of your union with the Lord. Sa amplified version naman, sabi doon, Therefore, my fellow believers whom I love and long for, my delight and crown, my wreath of victory, in this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Grabe, no? Paul speaks tenderly to the Christians in the Philippian church. Actually, love letter ang book of Philippians. Sa verses pa lang na yan, isang verse lang pero ilang ulit nang naulit yung word na love. Para kay Paul, ang mga Philippians, sila yung joy niya, sila yung crown niya, sila yung delight niya. Na every time na alala niya ang mga Philippians, his heart burst with joy. Ang ganda, no? Yun yung pagtingin ni Paul sa mga tao. Hindi pabigat, hindi pasakit, hindi sumpa. Actually, ang hirap magsabing, you are my joy, my delight, my crown. Kung ang tingin mo sa mga people, responsibilidad lang, obligation lang. Kaya nga kaninang umaga, na-emphasize ni Pastor Lord na ang kapatid ng joy, love. Hindi pwede kang maging joyful kung wala kang pag-ibig. And ito si Paul, he could not say na kayong mga Filipinos, you are my joy, my delight. Kung una mismo, hindi totoo ang pag-ibig na sa mga tao. So, mapapagawa. Pa-isip tayo, no? Nabibigatan ba tayo sa mga people around us? Maybe kulang na tayo sa love. Kasi ang normal daw, pag healthy ang relationship, those relationships will bring us joy. Amen? The people in our lives, especially yung deep, authentic, and intimate relationships na meron tayo, they should be sources of joy. Yung mga Filipians, for all that they are and for all that they have done, they are enabling Paul to be joyful. Grabe no, may mga tao ba na ganun ang effect mo sa kanila na dahil kilala ka nila, umaapaw ang joy nila? Or baka baliktad, dahil kilala ka nila, sinusumpa na nila ngayon ang relationships. Anyways, it's rewarding. To see people love and follow the Lord. So, isa yun sa reason kung bakit delight kay 
alcohol ang mga people. Na, Hello, itong taong ito. Grabe yung pinagdaanan niya dati. Pero ngayon, ito na siya. Dati bitter pa to. Ngayon better na. Dati live-in, live-in pa to. Dahil sumunod kay Lord. Ngayon nagpakasal na. And it's bringing a lot of joy sa puso ni Paul. Really, no? Ibang level. Kapag na-witness mo ang transformation sa buhay ng mga tao. And mahihigitan pa rin kapag malaman mo din na you have played a part. Nagkaroon ka ng privilege na maging part ng transformation na yun. So praise God for that. ba? Diba? Yung dating suicidal, ngayon ay punong-puno na ng pag-asa. And even encouraging other people, yung mga taong talagang puno ng pighati at sakit, ngayon, despite sa mga circumstances, they are still joyful. And when you see that, hindi lang information, pero mga taong kilala mo, it would bring us joy. And sa nakita din natin dito, no, there's no relationship in the world that could compare to our relationship with fellow believers. Makikita din natin na yung relationship ni Paul at mga Philippians, hindi siya formal lang na relationship. Hindi siya organization lang, pero life on life. Hindi formalidad, pero buhay. Amen? So, can we say na yung mga tao, cost ng joy natin? Or baka cost ng grief? Cost ng pain? Yung mga nanay dyan, yung mga tatay dyan, yung mga anak ba natin, joy? Or pasakit? Yung mga tao dyan, yung mga bosses ba natin, joy or pasakit? Or baka naman ikaw, employer ka, tapos yung mga employees mo, sana talagang wala, hindi na sila pinanganak, no? So hindi ko alam, pero ganun pala dapat sa kay Paul na katulong sa kanya maging joyful because he has people in his life. ba diba? And sometimes, no? People withdraw from relationships because they think that they are not worthy. Na wag na lang ako makipag intimate relationship sa mga taong ito because I will just cause trouble. Papabigatin ko lang yung buhay nila. A right of perspective of self is really needed for us to help na mag-build ng relationship. Right perspective ng self and right perspective din ng other people. So makikita natin sa binas natin na verse kanina, ano ba talaga yung right perspective? Sino tayo? Sabi dun, we are fellow believers. We are beloved. We are long for. Ganun nung grabe, inaasam tayo. We are a delight and we are a crown. Hangiting yung identity na yun. Pero you know what? This joy that we have with people, it often gets tested. Sabi sa verse 2, Now I appeal to you with the ancient TK, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women. For they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. So verse 2, we see Paul pleading sa dalawang babaeng ito na magkaayos na. Uy, Yuridia and Sintike, please. Settle your disagreement. And he is even asking the other church mates to help yung dalawang ito, yung itulungan na magkasundo ang dalawang ito. The reality is, yes, people are a source of joy. But because people are also made differently, conflicts happen. And conflicts, if hindi ito nasisettle, it will rob us of joy. But we need to know that conflicts are natural and should be expected and normal. Huwag nyo isipin, hello, grabe na yung buhay ko. Ba't ang dami kong in conflict? Newsflash, yan po ang normal because we live in a broken world. And in fact, dito, no, conflicts happen even in the context of church, even in the context of fellow believers. May nakausap ako dati, sabi niya, akala ko ang world lang ang makabigay sa akin ng pain. Hindi ko alam na pati ang church din ang makakos sa akin ng pain. Pero that's true. Welcome to reality. That's life. Yung tao sa world at ang tao sa church, parehos lang na tao. And mas malala pa when leaders are in conflict. The impact on the church is significant. Baka magka-church split pa, magka-division pa, hindi mapagkasunduan. Ano ba yung color ng curtain? Black or white? Ay, wag na. Ayaw, ayaw niyo dito. 
lumipat na lang kayo sa ibang church. So, may kilala ako dito ang church sa Cebu na nag-split dahil hindi magkasundo sa tingin natin ng mga maliliit lang na mga bagay. And really, ito yung reality. When we are in conflict or when we are in disagreement, hindi ka talaga magiging joyful. You can't say, people, you are my source of joy. Iniisip natin, people, ikaw ang source ng pain ko. Ikaw ang source ng pighati ko. Sana wala ka na lang dito sa mundo. But sabi doon, di ba, ang ganda, ang strong, imperative, eh, command. Oh, you will be always in take it. Please, settle your disagreement. Conflicts are normal, pero hindi normal ang pabayaan na lang. Hindi normal na huwag pansin na lang. Pero kailangan daw talaga i-settle. Conflicts are meant to Pwede be dealt yun. with. And not to Bina. pretend mo... that everything is well. May mga false peace ba tayong mga friends dito? Hello, good morning! Pero sa isip-isip natin, sana matapilok ng taong ito. Pero hindi dapat ganun eh. Ang totoong church, ang totoong relationship, nakaka-conflict, pero hinaharap ang conflict. Amen? Yung conflicts malilesen and may resolve. If we will look past our own difference and focus on having the same mind. Sa ibang translation sabi doon, Yuidia and Sintiki, have the mind of Christ. And makikita natin, no, if we are just focused on our own self or focused sa mga faults ng other person, hindi may result ang conflict. But when we focus on Jesus, makikita natin na ang konti lang pala ng differences natin compared to what we have in common. Na it's not worth it na itapon ang pagsasamahan dahil lang sa hindi pagkakaintindihan. Amen? And sabi nga ni Paul, oh, ibang church mates, tulungan niyo sila. People will really benefit in their conflicts if may tutulong sa kanila. Amen? People are a source of joy. Let's be thankful to them. Yung iba nga, sabi nga kaninang umaga, di ba, na baka hindi mo kayang makipagsettle sa person kasi in the first place, ikaw mismo hindi ka pa settled. So, huwag mo antayin na Magkum, yung uwak, pumuti before ka gumawa ng something. If you know that you are in disagreement sa tao, settle it with yourself first. And I believe after spending time with the Lord, the Lord will convict you to also settle it to other people. Amen? Amen. Pangalawang P, prayer. Sabi sa Philippians 4, 6-7, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Sabi din sa same verse at PPT, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell Him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So makikita natin dito that a lack of prayer leads to anxiety. Ano yung anxiety? It's being pulled in different trans- direction. It's being Being, be, ano yun, balisa, filled with worry, hindi mapakali, which is actually the opposite of peace. When peace is tranquility, ang ito namang anxiety, ito naman yung parang war, turmoil, siguro yung paligid mo at peace naman, pero deep inside, binabagyo ka because you are anxious. And bakit daw anxious? Because we lack prayer. Because we are not able to bring to the Lord every petition, every detail of life. Isipin niyo yun, what great peace do we forfeit by not taking every worry unto the Lord? Pag isasolo mo yun, gaano kayang peace ang nawala sa'yo dahil hindi mo siya binibigay kay Lord? Yung mga tao, no? hindi naiisip ko, nag-aalinlangan lumapit kay Lord. 
siguro iniisip nila, ay, maliit lang naman to na bagay. Ay, okay lang to, kaya ko to. Or baka, masyadong malaki naman to. Parang hindi ata siya, ano, parang si Lord ay pang ano lang siya, spiritual na stuff. etong malaking problem ko, baka hindi na to para kay Lord. So, kung ganun tayo may mindset na ganun, we do not take things unto the Lord. Pero sabi nga ni Jesus, di ba? He told us to always pray and not to faint. As and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. We have not because we ask not. And sometimes, medyo funny tayo. Iniisip natin nagpipray tayo, pero actually, nagmamonolog lang tayo at hindi pa talaga tayo nagpipray kay Lord. And sabi din ni Jesus, di ba? Who by worrying can add another time sa buhay niya? Add another hour. Wala talagang Ma- mapa, ano yun, walang magandang benefit ang pag-worry. Pero yun, minsan ganun tayo, kahit alam na sina dapat mag-pray, gusto pa rin nating itry. May mga ganun baka kayo dito, mga try and try until I die. Joke lang. Try and try until, until I succeed. Uh, wait, wait muna Lord, wag muna ako mag-pray. Subukan ko muna tong going on my own. And sige, gawin mo, gawin mo. And kapag hindi na saka kinaya, sige Lord, do na ako lalapit sa'yo. May mga ganun ba dito na yung automatic response mo ay hindi mag-pray. Kundi i-try out mo muna and kapag hindi na mag-work, dun ka palang mag-pray. So kung ganun tayo, no, what great peace do we forfeit? And I myself could relate to this. I was diagnosed way back in high school na meron akong panic attack disorder. So mga, mga, mga kilala ako, mabilis po akong mag-panic, maninigas ako, mga everything. And praise God, no, sa journey ko, na iintindihan ko na prayer ang katapat ng anxiety. Kasi when I pray, I give it to the Lord. I remind myself about who He is and I will experience peace. Pero it's still a struggle. I remember when I was assigned in Masbate noong March, April, May, talagang at kalagitnaan ng work ko doon para akong pinagsakluban ng langit at lupa. Kaya para bang ang maliliit na bagay, para hindi ko na magets and na-realize ko dahil yun sa anxiety ko. What if mamali ako? What if ano hindi tama ang pagtingin nila sa akin because I was new sa job na yun. So, ang daming pressure. What if hindi ko tumatapos on time? May history pa naman ako na simula ng mga bagay-bagay na hindi naman natatapos. Kasi ang dami na talaga parang parang lahat ng alam ko na quench out na dahil sa worry. But praise God, I remember this. Oo oh, nga, no, mag-pray. And when I prayed, Nabalik, nabalik ang joy, nabalik ang peace. And yung isang ginagawa ko doon, I was characterizing rocks. And nabasa ko sa isang psalm that, that God is my rock. And doon ko na-realize na, na God is part of what I do. And He wants me to be successful. So, maliit lang yun. Parang alam ko naman yung do not worry. Pero, ibang level kapag na-apply natin. Amen? And sabi din doon, we are to bring our request to the Lord with thanksgiving. Kailangan din natin alalahanin yung lahat ng blessing, lahat ng magandang bagay na binigay ni Lord. Kasi kapag naalala mo yun, o oh nga, no, laki ng problem ko noon, pero napagtagumpayan, tataas ang faith mo. Kasi si Lord, yung hindi ako pinabayaan sa tahin na yun, hindi rin niya ako pababayaan ngayon. A thankful heart will combat every complaining spirit and a lack of faith. Hindi ka na nag enjoy sa prayer mo, baka nalilita niya ka lang ng mga problem at kinukulang ka na ng pasasalamat. Even sa pagpipray mo right then and there, begin thanking the Lord because we know that God is a God who hears, a God who listens to our prayers. Amen? And because we pray, because we are thankful to the Lord, we experience this peace of God. My peace na naiintindihan natin. Ano yun? Peace dahil wala kang problem. Peace dahil nabayaran mo yung mga bills. Peace dahil nagkasundo kayo ng family mo. Pero ang sabi doon, peace daw na hindi naiintindihan. Peace daw na hindi logical. Peace na surpasses all understanding. Ano yun? Ito yung peace na despite the circumstances, despite the environment, despite the happening, you still have it. Ito yung peace na walang natural na explanation. And ito yung peace na available when we come to the Lord in prayer and in thanksgiving. I have learned this, that peace and joy, they go hand in hand. Because of joy, there is peace. And because of peace, there is joy. Prayer will remind us of who God is. 
that He is in control, that He is powerful, that we are not alone, and there is hope. Amen? So, assess yourself. Wala ka bang peace? Wala ka bang joy? Tingnan mo, kumusta ang prayer life mo. Pangatlong P, purity. Sabi sa verse 8, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Dun sa binasansin kanina sa verse 7, sabi dun, God will guard our heart. God will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Pero sa verse 8, nakikita natin dito na meron tayong role to play sa pag-guard ng heart, emotions, mind, thoughts natin. Na meron pala tayong effort na gagawin. May, sabihin mo yung katabi mo, friends, may role to play ka dito sa peace mo. Amin na natin, our life is largely molded by what we think or how we think. We know this, our thoughts, it affect our emotions and our emotions in turn affect our behaviors. So kung wrong ang thinking, wrong ang feeling. Nag-iisip ka, kaya ako nahihirapan. God must be punishing me dahil ito sa kasalanan ginawa ko dati. Kinarma lang ako. May mga ganun ba kayo na mag-iisip? O iniisip po ba na wala talaga akong kwentang tao? Ang tanga-tanga ko. Alam ko naman na mali, pero ginawa ko pa rin. Bakit ba ako ganito? Wala akong binatbat. Hindi ako karapat dapat. Ano pa yung mga thoughts mo? Pangit ako. Walang nagmamahal sa akin. Tapos dadagdagan mo pa sa panonood mo ng mga k-drama at mga love song na puro bitter. So yun yung pinipid mo sa mind mo. Meron ka ng self-talk na negative, dadagdagan mo pa ng pag-feed sa mga media na negative din, wala na. Kumusta na ang feelings natin yan? Negative na yan. It will affect our behavior. In yung opposite naman, yun yung true. Pag right naman ang thinking, pag pure naman ang thinking, pure din ang feeling. Na makikita natin na sa lahat ng challenges na hinaharap mo ngayon, iniisip mo, oy, this is part of God's death. This is part of the process. I am being matured. I am growing. People are difficult because they are being used by God as sanctifying tools to purify me because God is after my holiness. And kaya ako nagkakamali kasi I am still a work in progress. Hindi pa ako finished product. So I should stop being hard on myself. Na it's not just a matter of destination. But God is also concerned about the journey. I am favored. I am chosen. I am loved. I am accepted. I am a source of joy. And I bring delight to people. Grabe, no? Sa pag-iisip ka lang magbago, ang laki na ng impact sa feelings, ang laki na ng impact sa quality of life mo in general. So check this out. How is your thought life? What have you been meditating? Are you feeling down? Maybe the main culprit of that feeling down is our thinking. Negative thinking is very harmful. Wrong thoughts, wrong feelings, wrong behavior. It will even cause you to have broken relationships and it will take away our joy. We can truly be spared a lot of deal of suffering if we have just the right thoughts. Tama ba? If we have the right thinking. Ako, I've been realizing na ang daan ko palang issue sa thought life. So I consulted a uh, psychologist and na-realize ko nga na 25% pala ng buhay ko damage dahil sa negative thinking. And wala siyang ibang sinabi sa akin, Uy, put your thoughts into the test. It doesn't mean that it feels right. It's already right. Kailangan mong i-judge yung thoughts na yun. Tama ba yun? At ma or mali. And if tama, sige, duel. Pag mali, huwag mo nang tanggapin. I-reject na natin. Amen? People who have wrong thoughts about themselves are miserable. People also who have wrong thoughts about others are also miserable. Pasakit yung mga taong ito. 
kung wala lang sila, what a bright world this will be. Kung pinanganak lang sana ako sa ibang pamilya, what a bright world this will be. Kung iba lang sana ang friends ko, iba lang sana ang school ko, iba lang sana ang company ko, ang boss ko, ang work ko, kung may pera lang sana ako, so on and so forth. Kung ganun yung pag-iisip mo, it will rub you of joy. Ito pa, usong-uso ito ngayon. Sino sa inyo nagpa-vaccine na? Or nakarinig ng mga conspiration. Ngayon, conspiration theory, conspiracy theory sa mga vaccine. Guys, get your facts straight. Kung ganun ang pag-iisip mo, hala, ano na to? Mark of the beast. Hala, ano na to? Kung ano-ano mga iniisip mo, baka narab ka na mga joy mo dyan. Really, pansinin mo, the people who think more of other people, they are generally happier. Pero yung mga people na super engrossed sa sarili nilang buhay, sila din yung masalimuot. Amen? Pure. Purity. Truth. Not lies. Honorable. Not dishonorable. Right. Not wrong. And yung thoughts na align sa word ni God, pure and wholesome, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy. So ask yourself, what have you been feeding? We live in a dirty world. We see a lot of dirty things. We hear a lot of dirty things. Maybe sa social media, maybe sa own family, sa own friends, pero even din sa own doing natin, di ba? Entertainment mo, Netflix, kung ano-ano din ang nandun. So what have you been feeding? And how have you been thinking about yourself? How do you think about other people? How do we even process an offense? Di ba? Do we process them as mistakes, failures, or nagbi-blame game tayo? Are we there? How we think will have a significant impact with our joy. Amen? Pang-apat, sabi sa verse 9, The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in daily life, and the God who is the source of peace and well-being will be with you. Ang pang-apat na P, Practice. Sabi nga to ni Paul sa chapter 3, no? Beloved friends, imitate my walk with God and follow all those who walk according to the life who we model before you. Sabi ni Paul sa kanila, kayo guys, the things that you learn from me, yung mga tinuro namin, practice it. The things na minodel namin, nakita ninyo, paano namin isinabuhay, follow it. Practice it. Ang amazing lang kasi we have not been left here on earth na alone. But we have been provided by God na may mga patterns. And we need to be thankful to the Lord for that. May kausapin ako kahapon and sabi niya, yes, kaya yan sila ganun mag-respond dahil sa pattern of behavior na na na-format sila, na-program sila. Pero may pag-asa pa yan sila only if may makita silang model. Napakahalaga na may mga model. Siguro, assess natin ang sarili natin. Ang buhay ba natin? Karapat dapat na model. Or baka ikahiya natin. Ang pangalawa din, meron ba tayong model na sinusunod? Yung lahat ba ng mga tinuturo sa atin, sa church, sa life groups, sa permitted Sunday service, have we been putting it into practice? Kasi kung hindi, it will also rub us of joy. We are to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. Pansinin niyo to, pag may alam kayo pero hindi niyo nagawa, it will bring guilt. It will bring shame. O nga, no, alam ko naman to, pero bakit hindi ko to ginawa? Pero pag may nalaman ka naman ang in-apply mo, sino sa inyo nag-training ka sa work or sa school? Tandaan ko, meron kaming advanced training in Microsoft Excel. Yung mga V-lookup, tas may, may ano doon, exercise. Tapos na, wow, na V-lookup to, mga bagay-bagay. May mga nakarate mo ng V-lookup. Hala, ang saya! Kasi na-apply mo, ang natutunan mo, ano yun pala yung normal pattern? Whatever we apply, na natutunan natin, it will bring us joy. Pero pag marami ka namang natutunan, pero walang application, it will also bring grief, shame, and condemnation. Amen? All knowledge and no application will harden our heart and it will also deceive us. Pero sabi dun ni Paul, kanina ba? The dailiness of the practice. 
many times ang na mga natutunan natin, yung application niya, hindi one time, big time. Pero every day, what have we been doing about the things that we are learning every day? Mamaya, paano mo plano i-apply ang mga natutunan mo ngayon for the week? Amen? Not practicing what we know again, it will lead to guilt and frustration. Pero yun nga eh, many times, people, they know what to do. Tama ba yun? But they just don't do it. Wanna bring back the joy in your life? Obey. Practice. Try mo lang and magugulat ka what a great difference it will bring to your life. Amen? And you could also assess yourself, no? May integrity ba ako to say, kagaya ni Paul, imitate me as I imitate the Lord? Or sasabihin mo, guys, follow the Bible but not me. Are we using our lives as an excuse? Okay, wag nyo ako, tao lang ako, ha? follow the Lord, follow Paul, not me. For the world is looking for real life patterns. Baka tayo ang inaantay na pattern ng pamilya natin. Tayo ang inaantay ng pattern ng mga office mates natin na kahit grabe na ang pinagdadaanan, makikita nila how we respond, it would speak a ton of message sa kanila na hindi na mismo natin kailangan magsalita. Are we there? Practice. Sabi nyo nga, practice. Panglima, verse 10, sabi ni Paul, How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Jump lang tayo sa verse 14 to 16. Nevertheless, it was right of you to share with me in my difficulties. And you Philippians know that in the early days of preaching the gospel after I left Macedonia, no other church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent me a gift more than once for my needs. So si Paul dito, he was giving praise. What do we mean by praise? Praise, in according to the dictionary, it means the act of expressing approval or admiration. It's giving a commendation, a laudation. Paul was praising the Philippians. And because he was praising the Philippians, in turn, this is causing him to have joy. Paul was overflowing with thanksgiving to the Philippian church for all the help and support that they have extended. Uy, guys, salamat talaga sa lahat ng tulong niyo. In fact, grabe, yung time na ako na may pangangailangan, walang ibang tao ang nag-share ng burden kundi kayo lang. Paul was so thankful for the concern of the Philippians. Sabi nga doon, thank you for sharing in my difficulties. Grabe, no? Grabe ito yung mga Philippians. Sinishare, hindi lang ang celebration, ang joy, ang mga blessings, pero sinishare nila ang mga difficulties. Are we like that? Diba? Ito, isipin ito. Sabi ng mga Bible scholars, hindi daw tuloy-tuloy ang pag-help ng mga Philippian church kay Paul. May time daw na naputol. May time daw na ilang years na hindi nila natulungan si Paul. Sabi nga ni Paul, di ba, na I know concerned kayo, pero hindi lang sa lahat ng pagkakataon na bigyan kayo ng chance. Pero anong, anong response ni Paul? Pwede naman siya magdrama, di ba, na uy, grabe naman kayo, ba't kayo hindi tumulong sa akin? Bakit hindi kayo faithful? Di ba nag-promise kayo, bakit hindi nyo ginawa? He could have be bitter na ganun, pero hindi na yun inisip eh. Because he was seeing the good of people instead of their flaws. When we begin to be grateful and not to complain for what is lacking, there is joy. Baka hindi natin na-appreciate ang mga people around us, ang mga bagay sa buhay natin kasi palagi natin hinahanap ang wala at hindi natin nakikita ang meron. Paul did not take it against the Philippians kung bakit hindi sila able na nakatulong sa ganong point in time pero malaki pa din ang pasasalamat niya. So question, are we praising people 
Or are we complaining about people and taking offense for the failed promises and the disappointments they have caused us? Sabi mo ganito, bakit hindi? Nag-promise ka ng ganito, bakit hindi natuloy? Hindi natuloy ako maniniwala sa mga promise mo, pero hindi ganun si Paul eh. Despite sa failure, despite sa hindi pagka-complete, malaki pa din ang praise na binigay niya. And I believe that is one thing we need to learn. We need to increase our appreciation. We need to increase our praising of people. Baka tayo hungry lang makareceive ng praise. Pero tayo ay stingy na magbigay ng praise sa ibang tao. Natry mo na ba what a good job does to a person? We good job ka. Ay talaga. And you will see that person light up Uy, thank you talaga. Pero of course, yung genuine, hindi yung flattery. Minsan kasi, ang ganda mo ngayon ah. Pwede pa utang. Iba naman yun. Pero yung tunay na nagpapasalamat ka, when we do that, it would really create a ripple of change in the atmosphere. And it would lead us to be more joyful. And ang ganda din dito isipin, no? hindi lang si Paul ang tumutulong sa mga Filipian. Sabi niya, uy guys, You shared in my difficulties. You ministered unto me. You are concerned for me. You helped me. You supported me. Yung totoong relationship, give and take yan. Hindi normal ang puro ka lang bigay-bigay. Hindi rin normal na puro ka lang sanggap-sanggap. Sa situation dito, Paul was giving and when opportunity came, the Philippians were also giving back to Paul. And that is the beauty of relationship. Kaninang umaga nga daw, sabi di ba, kung ikaw puno ka ng pagmamahal pero hindi mo naman yun pinuflow outside of you, parang tubig na natenga, babaho. So whatever we receive, no, let's be generous to give it away. Amen? So yun yung beauty ng relationship. Increase our praise to people. And lastly, power. Yun yung pang-anim na P. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Sabi ni Paul, Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Maganda ito sa The Passion Translation. Sabi doon, I'm not telling you this because I'm in need or nagpapakontensya ako. But because I have learned to be satisfied in any circumstance, I know what it means to lack and I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. For I am trained in the secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or in hunger. And I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. Power. And that power, sabi dun, comes from Christ. It's in Christ. Sabi ni Paul, I have learned to be content. Naisip nyo ba na natutunan, hindi siguro innate, hindi natural. Siguro, totoo yun sa background ni Paul. Paul, he was a learned person at the time. So kung ikaw nakapag-aral ka sa mga magagandang school at that time, okay ang family mo. Well off kayo. So we could picture Paul na yung background niya well off, well provided. Pero sabi niya, natutunan ko paano mag-survive sa all things. How? Experience. How? Difficult experience. How? Hardship. So maybe tayo, walang natural na ganong learning. Walang natural na ganong contentment. Kasi ikaw ay palagi kang kulang. But the Lord will really push you no, to experience difficulties and it will lead you to grow in this contentment. There is one thing na dapat natin meron. It is contentment. Kasi kung hindi tayo contented, We will never be at peace. We will never be at joy. Ay, latest model ng cellphone. After one month, may bago na naman. Latest, like, latest ano, gadget, latest sasakyan, latest ganito, latest damit. Hindi talaga tayo na, na at peace. May mga tao na kanila ang lahat. 
sobrang yaman, sobrang sikat, sobrang dami nilang mga ano, laudation, doctor, attorney, etc. Pero bakit hindi contented? What is the lacking in the equation? It's Christ. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Nasa iyo man ang lahat. Pero pag wala si Jesus sa life mo, kulang pa rin yan. Wala ka mang kayamanan. Wala ka mang abundance. Pero when you have Christ, magugulat ka. You will really feel rich. So rich na kahit sa konti na meron ka, you are able to be generous. Amen? Godliness with contentment is really great gain. Things may not be well, no? but our gratitude, our thanksgiving to the Lord for all the blessings He has done will truly enable us to be contented with our lot in life. May mga people na ang challenge just nila ngayon sa health. Good to know kung wala kang challenge sa health, pero may challenge ka naman sa family relationship. Good to know kung wala kang challenge sa finances. Yung iba naman, ang challenge ay significance. Kung ano man yung kakulangan mo sa buhay ngayon, find your completeness in Christ. And we will experience that joy that surpasses all understanding. And sabi dito, hindi tayo ang gagawa eh. Sabi nga kanina, Christ explosive power at work in us. I believe walang tao able na maging contented na siya lang. We are only able to be contented because of God's power at work in us. Sometimes nga, no, nakatakot ang abundance. Why? It will make us complacent. Sometimes din, nakatakot din yung pain and suffering kasi it would also cause us to be embittered. Pero ang ganda ng sabi ni Paul, regardless ano ang circumstance ko, meron or wala, mayaman or mahirap, Puno ang chan, gutom, okay ako. May mga tao ba dito na pagpatak ng 11.30 at hindi pa yun nakakain, lumayo ka na lang doon kasi magwawalod na yan. May mga ganong tao eh. Kapag hindi nakakain on time, nagiging monster. Pero kay Paul, no? Ang sarap nun. Pero I believe, hindi yun naging madali. He experienced a lot of hardship para ma-enable siya to learn contentment. Mahirap ba ang buhay mo ngayon? Maybe nasa school of contentment ka pa. Para ka bang may mga hinahanap na hindi mo makuha? Baka nasa school of contentment ka pa. Continue ka lang dyan. Padayon ka pa lang in Visaya. Surrender to the Lord and magugulat ka. Yun pala ang ginagawa mo, Lord. And again, it's not us. It's the power of Christ. Sabi nga ni Paul, I can do all things. ba? Diba? Pero hindi to all things ha. Lahat. Sige, gawin ko na lahat. Pero hindi. All things na align sa will ni God. All things I can do through the power of Christ at work in me. And kapag ganito tayo, if we have people, prayer, practice, purity, praise, and power, no, we will be living lives of joy despite of the hardships. Amen? Whatever you may be going through right now, You may have a choice whether to be joyful or not. We may not have a control about what happens to us, but we sure do have a control on how we respond. Instead of the negativity, let's respond in faith. Let's respond in prayer. Let's respond in peace. And when we do things, when we do these things, we will be responding in joy. And this joy that we have, it will be something that exceeds human expectation. Walang natural na base, pero joyful ka. And this will cause us to become a blessing to the other people as well. And it would always be because of the power of Christ at work in us. Let's just pray. Lord, maraming salamat sa word mo. Maraming salamat sa example ni Paul. Maraming salamat even sa mga dinadanas namin ngayon. Hardships and sufferings and so on and so forth. Salamat Lord for your word. It teaches us, O oh God, to not be victims of our circumstances, but to overcome, but not with our own power, but through your power at work in us. But we also have a role to play, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. 
I pray God that we would be more disciplined in our thought life, that we would filter everything according to your word, oh God, in Jesus' name. Even, oh God, kung kinukulang kami sa pagmamahal and it's causing us, oh God, to be kind of grumbling, to be complaining about the difficulties that we experience, even even when we are doing good, but if kulang kami sa pagmamahal, oh God, we would still grumble, Lord, forgive us, oh God, forgive us, oh Lord. God, we want this joy and we don't want the enemy to keep us rubbing of this joy, oh God. Na Lord, hindi namin kailangan antayin ang heaven para ma-experience ang joy, oh Lord. It is your will for us to be rejoicing people right here, right now, no matter what the circumstances may be, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray God that we would be people putting things into practice. Na hindi lang kami nag-insert, in, nag insert ng mga knowledge, wala namang application. Oh God, forgive us, oh Lord. Forgive us for allowing sin and discontentment to rob us of our joy, oh God. Lord, allow us na maging reality yung sabi ni Paul na dahil sa'yo, He is complete, O oh God. Hindi man namin makuha ang mga gusto namin, hindi man nangyayari ang mga bagay sa timeline na gusto namin, but Lord, we are contented because we have You. Because of You, we are complete, O oh God. And because we experience the joy in You, the peace with You, O oh God, and the love with You, we are also able to give away that love, that peace, that joy. That we will not allow people, oh God, to dictate our feelings. We will not allow the circumstances, oh God, to dictate the quality of life that we have. But we will fight this battle. We will fight in faith, knowing that we are never alone. But you are really with us. Lord, sa mga taong nag-iisip na too late na, or inyon mo na sila, Remind them of your truth, O oh God, that you have never left them. You have never forsaken them. And you will never ever leave them. That there is no sin too great, O oh God, that would separate us from your love, O oh God. And I pray that this will not just be head knowledge nor lip service, but be a reality. Na no, no one will walk away from this service, O oh God, na puno pa rin ng guilt ng pain, ng shame. Because Lord, in you, there is forgiveness. If ikaw ito, at alam mo, marami ka talaga nagawang pagkakamali, talk to the Lord. Sabi nga, tell Him about every detail of your life. Pray, talk to Him right now. And when we do, when we unload our struggles, when we unload our feelings, our emotions to the Lord, His peace that transcends all human understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, enable us, O oh God, to be confident to say to people, to imitate us as we walk with you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name. Even I make this prayer to the people na it may be your first time here or nag-attend ka pa ng church pero medyo clueless ka pa sa bagay-bagay. Bakit ba nagkakaroon ng joy? Bakit ba nagkakaroon ng positive and overcoming mindset despite of the hardship? It's never within us. It's because of Jesus. And if ikaw to, ang kulang sa equation ng buhay mo ay si Jesus. Right now, you could decide to surrender to the Lord. Surrender all your struggles. Surrender all your strife. Remember that He is in control. Remember that He loves you. And kung ano yung sin na nakos mo, nagawa mo, because of Jesus' death on the cross and His resurrection, we can be sure of our forgiveness. God will forgive you. He is faithful and just to forgive us if we come to Him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Maraming salamat sa araw na to, Lord. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You're watching Destiny Church. 
if you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph slash give.